today we are going to see unit 5 the basic first chapter is pipe and tubes we know that for the transportation of the materials in the chemical industry we are going to use pipes or tubes through this only the materials will be transferred from the reactors to heat exchangers condensers distillation columns absorption units so in our chemical technology one we have seen the process flow sheets in between the equipments we have some lines so basically these lines represents the pipes or in some cases tubes so this is about the transportation of materials it is done by means of pipes or tubes if the cross sectional area is a square then of course it is called as a conduit if it is circular it is called as a pipe or a tube fluids are transported in pipes or tubings they vary in cross sectional area wall thickness and material of construction these are the three parameters how we can differentiate the pipes they can different they can be done by means of the cross sectional area say for example the internal diameter for one pipe is 1 inch for the second pipe it will be 2 inches so hence their cross sectional area will varies so cross sectional area of a pipe whose internal diameter is 2 inches will transport more amount of the material okay depending upon the intensity with which it is sent into the pipeline similarly if a pipeline has to withstand high pressures then of course the thickness of the pipeline should be more especially we have seen haber's process in which ammonia is manufactured there the operating pressure varies from 100 to 1000 atmospheres or very high atmospheres so how we can transfer the material from the reactor to some other equipment there also we are supposed to use a pipeline whose thickness is very high on the vice versa there are certain types of reactions are there which will be taking place at a low pressures okay so in that case also we are supposed to use pipelines but of course the pressure accepted will be more from the atmosphere side whereas inside the pipeline the pressure will be less so there also the thickness of the wall will also vary and material of construction for example we are transporting ammonia gas we use one type of material because ammonia is a strong base we are going to use concentrated sulfuric acid it is a strong acid and we have seen in our nitric acid manufacturing that dehydration of nitric acid is done by means of stone wares in short stone is used as a material for transportation to resist the high corrosive attack of ammonia sorry uh, nitric acid which will be concentrated by means of sulfuric acid so when these two acids are used we have already seen in our chemical technology work that the stone wares are used for the manufacturing of the equipments or even for the transportation of the materials pipe is you know what is the basic difference between a pipe and a wall a pipe is a heavy wall relatively large in diameter comes in moderate length from 20 ft to 40 ft they are manufactured in terms of uh, different sizes 20 ft and 40 ft so if you want to have 3 ft or 4 ft it is very difficult so we have to get 20 ft and then cut it and then use it according to our purpose and then we can use it so pipes are heavy walled and relatively large in diameter and they will be having lengths two types of lengths one is 20 ft and 40 ft a tubing is a thin wall often comes in coils several hundred ft long suppose if you go to purchase any of the water pipes which we are using for domestic sector sector there would have seen that in the hardware shop the pipe is kept in a coil and according to our requirement he will measure in meters and then he'll cut it and then give to us but these things will not be possible for pipelines so pipelines will come with a constant length 20 ft to 40 ft according to our requirement we are going to use them for our process we fabricate them we cut them 
we use them according to our process application. Then, metal pipe can be threaded, tubing cannot. So, what is meaning of a threads? For example, we have a pipe like this. We have another pipe like this. Now, how to join this pipe? Because we know the pipe is fabricated, manufactured of a length 20 feet. So, if we are going to lay a pipeline for 1 kilometer, then we may use n number of pipelines. <coughs> when we are using n number of pipelines, then of course we are supposed to join them. So, how to join them is an important question. So, hence we are going, already we have seen that pipe is made up of a heavy metal, heavy metal or a thickness of the metal, thickness of the pipeline is more. So, hence we will go for the threading. So, threading means what sir, already we have studied in our, in our workshop, we have seen that we can use a lake machine to put external threads to a pipeline, internal threads to a pipeline. And then thus we join the two pipelines by means of a couplet. That I will explain you after a certain amount of slides. So, a pipeline can be threaded either on its surface, outside the surface area or inside the surface area depending upon our requirement. Whereas tubes cannot be threaded. They are supposed to be joined by means of soldering or by means of applying heat which we which will see after certain time. Pipe walls are usually slight rough, tubing is very smooth for us. Now pipe walls are rough means internal surface here. If you go internally, we don't have a uniform surface or a smooth surface. But from the top, if you see, it will be machined and then we will have a smooth surface. But internally, it is not. But whereas the tube, if you see, internally and externally, we have a smoother surface area is possible for us. Pipes are joined by means of screw joint, flange and welding fittings, which we will see one by one afterwards. Tubing is connected by means of compression fittings, flare fittings and soldering fittings. Tubing is usually extruded or cold drawn while metal pipe is made by means of welding, casting or piercing a billet in a piercing mill. So tubes means what? Extruded means what? Ability of a material to draw it into the thin pipe. So we will have a die and through which we have a molten material stored there and through the die we are going to apply the pressure. So it will take the space in the molten material is made to pass through the under surface and then after the solidification we take out the pipe. This is also a tube. This is how we get the tubes and of continuous length we will wind them and then we send to the market. Whereas if you take the case of a pipe, pipe can be made by two means. First one, if the withstanding pressure is very less, then of course we can take a sheet and then we can bend them and then into circle and then we do the welding on the length. One type of things. Suppose if the pipe is used for uh, high pressures then of course it has to be made by means of casting that is molten material is, par is uh, poured into a die and then we give enough time for the solidification to take place we take out the die separate the die and then the pipe will be machined and then it will be sold into the market this is one thing and the second one is what suppose if you want to withstand high pressures then in a die we pour the molten material and then we are going to pierce a billet billet is a solid uh, material Okay, here the billet, okay, will material that is dropped into the molten material, and as it goes down, what will happen? It uh, deforms the solid and then goes back, and then we have a structure is obtained, and thus we are going to manufacture, we are going to get a pipeline which can resist high pressure. Say, for example, we have seamless pipes, seamless pipe is what, sir? pipes which are not welded, which are used for high withstanding high internal pressures. Then, pipe and tubing are made from many materials including metals, alloys, wood, ceramics, glass and various plastics. So if you uh, see the olden constructions, the pipes are made up of the ceramic materials or concrete materials. So they can stand uh, temperature fluctuations, all those things. But uh, if you see the latest applications, if you say apartments, all the pipes are made up of PVC because of putting less amount of weight on the structure. So we want to reduce the cost also. So hence we are using the uh, what do you say uh, PVC materials or uh, plastic materials or elastomer materials, reinforced materials used for the apartments or anything else because we want to reduce the cost of it also. Used for the uh, laying the pipelines. 
in the process plants low carbon steel plants steel pipelines are used in our industry also we are going to use pipelines but there we are going to use corrosive resistant material depending upon the corrosive nature of the material we are going to select the pipeline and then use it for the particular application the pipeline which is used for transportation of ammonia gas cannot be used for transportation of sulfuric acid or similarly we cannot use the material which is used for transportation of hydrogen with a high high pressures to transportation of water so depending upon our applications the nature of the material will be changing now pipe sizes are published in a term called as ASTM ASTM stands for American Society of Testing of Materials as we have indian standards institution we have american standards where they have published different sizes of the materials which we are supposed to manufacture because we cannot manufacture the pipes according to our own requirements we are supposed to follow some standards and these standards are well defined in a term called a book called as american society of testing of materials so based on those designs we are going to manufacture the pipelines and these pipelines will be used for the process industry because you know nut and bolts when we have a device if the nut is not working properly we will go to hardware shop and get it so if you are not maintaining standards you may not get the nut which is used for all the purpose so internationally we have come to conclusion that we are supposed to maintain standards and majority of the indian standard institutions are taken from the american society of testing of materials book okay and commonly the pipes are available from 1 by 8 to inch to 8 30 inch this is the variation of the diameters which are available to us in the market in case of the pipes schedule number for the pipe wall or wall thickness combinations are calculated to get a uniform relationship equal to 1000 times of p by s p stands for design pressure and s stands for the allowable stresser now what is this schedule number schedule number is a number which tells us a number of a number 10 20 30 40 60 60 these are the schedule numbers of the given pipe in some cases they designate the outer diameter in some cases they designated the internal diameter but what is the schedule number schedule number is the ratio of 1000 into p which is the design pressure and s is the allowable pressure what is the meaning of design pressure design pressure is always more because say for example in the manufacturing of ammonia the pressure ranges from 100 to 1000 atmospheres so let us take the design pressure as 1000 10 atmospheres because we give some relaxations if anything happens we are supposed to uh, take some precautionary measures to evacuate the people so we have some buffer time so hence the design pressure is always more then the actual pressure so what is the actual pressure so the pressure exerted by the fluid as it is moving inside the pipeline e is called as the allowable pressures so hence schedule number is equal to 1000 into design pressure divided by the allowable pressure with which the fluid is passing through the pipeline this is the ratio which is called as the schedule number and these schedule numbers only which are available in the market so we manufacture pipes according to the schedule numbers for pipes larger than 12 in the nominal size refers to the outside diameter so if for example if i say schedule number 10 what is the meaning of it it may refers to outer diameter or inner diameter so here common direction is what if the larger diameter is if the pipe sorry for pipe larger diameter is 12 inches nominal size refers to the outside diameter suppose if it is less than 12 inches it is refers to the inside diameter so what is schedule number it is the ratio of the design pressure the multiplication of 1000 to a ratio which is called as the uh, ratio of design pressure to the allowable pressure then the size of the tubing is indicated by the outside diameter only wall thickness is given by birmingham wire gauge this is also an again one more standards which are published and if you are manufacturing the pipe for example you say the pipeline in which we have in our gas connection that is different so for example if you see inside the refrigerator we have some uh, copper wires are there which are bent through with the freon gas through with the refrigerant will be going so there we are going to use the pipelines so so tubes so which are flexible in nature okay so their thickness their standards are given by birmingham wire gauge which ranges from 24 to 7 numbers so 24 is a very small number and 7 is a very large number so these are the range in which we sell the tubings the optimum size of the pipe for a specific situation depends upon 
the relative cost of the investment power maintenance and stocking material and fittings the uh, what is what should be the size of the pipe we can use say for example we said we have half inch to 30, 30 inches so how we are going to select it so it all depends upon the following first first one is what the specific situation do we have that much amount of space for installing a pipeline in a given chemical industry do we have that space when we keep so when you have a space is it possible for us to transport that much amount of material for the given time so it all depends upon the metal balance from the metal balance what we get is we get kgs 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 plus kgs is equal to kgs plus kgs so once you know this kg per second then you try to convert take the density and with the help of density you will get volumetric flow rate. so with the help of volumetric flow rate we know the velocity you know the cross section area from the cross section area we come to conclusion to the diameter so everything is what basis of an industry from there we deduce everything and then the relative cost of the investment so how much amount of rupees we are going to invest for example you take uh, the de uh, dehydration of nitric acid so there you are supposed to use stone ware so how it is possible to fabricate a stone ware it will be definitely costly and similarly for example transportation of water to cooling towers there we do not use much cost you know we can use low carbon steel so the cost will be reduced so it all depends upon what is the area which you are going to use this process and depending upon it the cost will come into the picture and then the power required the losses because as we know that whenever the fluid is passing through a pipeline there is loss of energy there to what extent we can give relaxation to loss of power that is also important then suppose if you take the case of apartments there we can't expect any losses so hence we are using uh, pvc tubes or pipes so pvc tubes pipes what will happen inside they are very smooth so hence friction will be less so loss of energy is very less so like that we are supposed to plan then stocking pipe and then fitting so how we are going to insulate the surface the outer surface area of the pipeline because there are you know there are two types of insulations are there core conservative insulation in which i am going to if inside a pipeline if i transport a material at a low temperature below the room temperature then of course i am going to have one type of insulation called as core conservative insulation there we have different type of material and the thickness of the material is more suppose if you are going to transport a material whose temperature is more than the room temperature for example steam or hot water then of course we have a term called as hot conservative insulation where of course the thickness may not be as big as the core conservative insulation but we have it so it all depends upon what material we are transporting at what conditions we are also transporting is also very important and at the same time pipe fittings so because we can't lay a single pipeline so we are going to use pipe fitting so these pipe fittings also depends upon what should be the diameter of the pipeline and how we are going to use it that we will see in our coming slides where we try to i try to explain you how to join two pipelines then joints and fittings now in this slide we'll see everything how to join two pipelines the methods used to join pipes and tubes depends upon the properties of the material what type of material i am going to use for construction of the pipeline and what is the thickness of the material i am going to use it what is the internal size of the internal diameter of the pipeline and what is the thickness of the pipeline all these factors are very important for me to understand what type of equipment or instrument i can join it and then join them together and then machine them then thickness of the material that is important then depending upon it we go for screw fittings flanges weldings is done where we don't have to cut the pipeline we don't have to we lay a pipeline for 2 or 3 kilometers and never we change that in that case we can go for welding that is acceptable but suppose if you want to remove the pipeline for maintenance or for recovery or for any emergency then of course we can't go for the welding because you know very well that once we do the welding the two pieces will be joined permanently then tubes are joined by means of soldering compression or flare fittings one example i'll give you when we try to take out our bore well the bore well is uh, which is present inside our crust and then we have a tube there and the tube will be fitted with some instrument of fitting so for example take the submersible pump so the pump is submerged inside the well so how to take it out how to, so they try to bring a liquid like very high lubricating oil they will heat it uh, to a greater extent and in that they dip this uh, pipeline and this tube what will happen becomes soft and once as it becomes soft and hot it will be 
uh, kept on the submersible pump and then after cooling they will keep the nuts and bolts and they will introduce it so the entire weight of the submersible pump will fall on the tube so tube will fall. so tube will be holding the entire things so how they are joining they are joined by means of this uh, application of the heat pipe made up of brittle materials like glass or carbon or cast iron is joined by means of flanges or bell and spike or joints so two pipelines if you want to join them two, two, two tubes if you want to join them heat one of the tube right to a tube and then insert it into the another one over the surface to a greater extent and then you have a gasket and then complete it so this is called as a bell and a spike or joint and similarly if you want to stop the flow at a particular point then of course we are going to use this uh, blind flange or a uh, circular disc which is going to stop the flow further i don't want to transport the material so i want to stop the flow at one particular point then i'm going to use this uh, blind and uh, the blink flange now these are the some of the ways some of the means which are available for us which will be used for joining the two pipes for example you take a pipe here Now what you do is, this is the slip on flange, this is a threaded flange, this is the lap joint which is used for joining the tubes and this is the blind flange. So what I do is, I take this slip flange, so slip flange, see, you see that internal diameter, this is the internal diameter of the slip flange and this is the outer diameter of the slip flange. So now what I do is, I take this piece and then I roll it over this, so it comes like this. it comes like this then it is rolling so here in this part i will be doing the welding so i so when i do the internal welding what will happen sir this will not now move so now this part similarly i prepare the other one so i bring those two pipelines together okay and then what i will do i will bring them close and here i am going to keep a gasket what is the purpose of a gasket sir a gasket will give a cushioning effect to two joints because this surface whichever is there this surface and the surface of the other one may not be smooth. If they are not smooth, what will happen is that there will be leaks will be there. For example, if you are transporting gas at high pressure, so through these gaps, it can come out. So hence, we are going to keep a gasket. So when you keep a gasket, what will happen is that it will be arresting the leaks. At the same time, the gasket is made up of an inert material and this inert material will not trigger any amount of the corrosion between these two surfaces, the another one, these two surfaces. So hence, Presence of gasket is very much important and a gasket will never interrupt the flows. And then we have uh, holes here, two holes. So here we have holes and we bring nut, we bring a bolt, we'll insert and we are going to keep it to, uh, what you say, uh, washers and then introduce and then with the help of a uh, pipe wrench or a screw spanner, whatever it is, we try to try it. So like that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over eight bolts are there through this we are going to introduce eight nuts and bolts and then we are going to tightly fix them so this is how we are going to join the things this is one the second one here one disadvantage is what this specimen will be welded to this pipeline so in case in the future if you remove this this specimen is dedicated to this pipeline only for example if you want, don't want that kind of things you want to replace the pipeline with but this is a very important thing in that case what will happen is I have a pipeline and on the surface area of the pipeline up to this point I will put some threads threads and here if you see this threaded flange inside we have the threads so for this pipeline it should have the externals so in the external if you have the threads and the help of this flange I will be keeping at this point so this diameter and this diameter both are same so I keep the specimen here and then I will rotate it so when I rotate it, what will happen sir? I will be firmly fixing it. Similarly, I prepare the second pipeline. Bring them together. Keep a gasket. And here you have one, two, three, four. Four bolts are there. With the help of this, I am going to put four nuts and bolts and then I am going to tighten it out. So what will be the conclusion here? If the operating pressure is very high, I will go for this kind of things. If the operating pressure is low or moderate, I go for this kind of things. 
where this is not dedicated this kind of item is not dedicated to the pipeline okay the pipeline will be completely detached we can throw it out and then bring a replace a newer one but it should also have external threads similarly we have combination of internal threads also for this or external threads also for this and suppose if you want to stop the flow so for example in the chemical industry we are having a pipeline like this it is like going like this at this point there are a number of outlets are there but here i am going to stop it because i am going to use it for future and future expansion then in this kind of instrument this kind of blend flange can be kept at this point so that the flow will not go from here to four here it is arrested this is one application and uh, here we have an, a, a concept of joining two uh, what do you say uh, the tubes the tube is made to pass through this uh, joint and then this uh, this whatever the diagram and by means of uh, a, what do you say uh, soldering or, weld or heating i will try to uh, insert this entire specimen onto the tube and then here we are going to join it so this is how i join the tubes so these are the common things which are available for us for joining a pipe So, for example, when this is called as an elbow, bellow, sorry, this is called as a bellow. So, what does bellow say? For example, when we have a pipeline, and here we have a fixed structure, here you have a fixed structure, and here also you have a fixed structure, and in between you have a pipeline, and because of some reasons there is an expansion in this, these two uh, planes will be there, or contraction should be there. So in that case, what will happen is that this expansion and contraction will show the effect on this. What will happen is that there will be unusual thermal stresses will be developed inside this pipeline. And within a short span of time, after some time or after certain prolonged amount of time, this pipeline is subjected for the failure. It breaks into two parts and the gas comes out. So hence, to avoid in such kind of situations where we have to give relaxation, we are going to keep an instrument called as an elbow. So this, sorry, the, uh, below. So I have a pipeline here and I am going to keep a bellow here and here I have a structure where I am going to join them and here also I have a bellow and here I have a massive structure and I am going to join it. So whenever this expansion contraction takes place that will be showing the effect on the bellow only. So this is uh, this is made up of a steel which can be exposed. I, I can pull it this side. This also it can go in pull side. So it has a spring action to certain extent. So these are very important device whenever we are using a term called as glass lined reactors. Whenever we are using these glass lined reactors, the glass lined reactors are connected by means of the nozzles or whatever by means of the expansion joint. These are called as the expansion devices which will be taking care of the un unusual expansion or contraction of the planes in which we have kept the pipeline so that these relaxations are taken by these kind of bellows. Then we have walls. What are walls? Walls are those devices which are used to regulate the flows. Walls are those devices which are used to regulate the flows. So for example, here you have a gate wall. This is the diagram of a gate wall. This is the diagram of a globe wall. Majority of our applications will have gate wall or globe wall. So if you see this one, we have the, let me, let me see the names, hand wall, stem, packing nut, gland follower, packing, bonnet, neck, seat, body, gate, disc, bonnet trick, etc, etc. So here I am going to connect, I am going to bring a pipeline, here I am going to join, similarly here also I am going to join it. So if you see the diagram, this wall, this body is having internal threads. So hence what I should do sir, I should bring a pipeline which is having external threads. And what, how we are going to join what is the procedure, sir? On the external threads of the pipeline, the pipeline which is having the 
threads on the external surface what you do you try to apply a grease and from the top you apply a PTFE ribbon you try to wound it on the surface and then you make a foam thing and similarly you insert it and with the help of a pipe wrench you rotate it now why we are applying grease only for giving a cushioning effect to, uh, to so that the uh, external threads will go into this internal threads easily that is the first point second one what is the purpose of keep keeping PTF ribbon to arrest the leaks because whenever you transport through this gap the material may come out so hence to avoid that I am going to use the PTF ribbon this is how we are going to join a pipeline to some of the devices so here when I rotate this handle what will happen sir this is nothing but you know uh, nut and bolt I keep uh, this is a nut and this is a bolt so I keep the nut for fixed one they say this is the nut this is the bolt so when I keep the nut bolt and rotate it what will happen sir this will try to come up and then I keep. similarly when I am keeping this first similarly when I rotate what will happen this will go down so this is the only action which is means what the stem will be going down the stem will be coming up the stem will be call carrying an item which will be closing the flow okay that is called as a gate and when I take it this will go up come down so this is how I am going to close or say for example regulate the flow inside the pipeline so so when I rotate the handle what will happen in the left hand side in the universe notice is what whenever you wanted to increase the flow rate you are supposed to rotate the handle in the anti-clockwise direction and whenever you wanted to arrest the flow rate or close the flow rate you should rotate the handle in the clockwise direction this is the universal notation on which we are going to build the walls then when I rotate this in the anti-clockwise direction what will happen sir this stem will try to rise up so when it is rising it is carrying the gate at this point so the gate will go so initially the entire flow whichever is coming that is stopped by means of this gate but now when the gate is rising it will allow the flow to go from here and it comes out now what is this one sir this is the packing which is arresting because if the fluid comes so from the gap it comes it may go from the here so we are supposed to arrest it for that purpose we are using a follower gland and then uh, we are using a packing etc etc which i will tell you in the next slide but what is the important thing for us see follower gland packing and the board this uh, is used for arresting the flow because the flow has to go from here to here it should not go in the vertical direction to arrest that we are going to keep it then so when this rises what will happen the fluid will be passing from here to here it goes out now the same application will be there for the gate wall but in the gate wall what will happen so there is a change in the direction there from here the fluid is coming it rises now top and from the side it goes out so remember there is no direct flow in the x axis it has to go from here change its direction and from there it goes so if you remember if you see the globe wall its volume is more at this point its volume is more than this wall so that is the difference between identifying a gate wall externally so if you see a gate wall externally its volume will be less but suppose if you see a globe wall same mechanism everything but here you have a volume will be more now the purpose of changing the direction is what if the fluid is moving with the high pressures it changes its direction from it moves like this and then it goes so when it goes like this what will happen it will be applying force on this object so this object means what this entire material of construction that will be resisting or resisting the applied force and then we try to remove this and slowly it will be coming out so for this purpose a globe wall will be used for transporting materials at higher pressures whereas gate wall will be used for ordinary because there is no change in the direction the fluid will be coming like this it will be exerting the pressure on it so entire this will be very less so once you try to raise up it goes out whereas in the globe wall it changes its direction now it goes like this so when it goes like this you apply the first so entire this line is resisting the applied force so hence the conclusion is what a globe wall will be used for the transportation of fluids at higher pressures whereas the gate wall is used for ordinary pressures we can use it similarly we have variety of uh, walls are there in our labs below the tank below the collection tank whatever the walls you are going to see they are called as butterfly walls so butterfly walls are used for closing and then opening suddenly because if you see here i have to rotate the wall when i rotate the wall what will happen slowly the 
uh, gate will be raising. So what will happen? The flow will be starting from zero to maximum velocity. It takes some amount of time. As you rotate, it will be rotating. But in case of the globe wall, we can increase the flow suddenly, close the flow suddenly. That is the application of the uh, butterfly wall which is there in our laboratory. All the devices, all the storage tanks below whatever is there, that is the example of a butterfly wall. And then the control walls which are there for our experiment, they are the gate walls. So globe wall is used only for transportation of materials at high pressures. I will show you one video. This video I taken it from the YouTube. This is used only for the purpose of knowledge, not for commercial usage or anything else. To understand better basics, I am taking this video from this. So in this video, we are going to see how a gate wall will be functioning. So we see the seat rings and they are inserted into the casing and then the wedge. This is the actual specimen which is controlling the flow rate and the stem, the connecting rod which is having threads and then the body gasket to avoid any leaks. And this is the bonnet and then bonnet seat ring to avoid the clearance and then gland packings gland bush to help the gland packings firmly and then the two screws eye bolts which can be swing and this is the pin I am going to lock it and gland flange which is inserted from the inside so that there are no leaks are there and the, now the screws are fixed so the leak is not there now I am going to sheet the bonnet now I have as nuts and bolts yes everything is fixed now yoke and the bush comes from the top to avoid the play seal and applying the grease and the key is there for that uh, keeping the handle firmly it is inserted now the handle will come yeah and that uh, key the handle is fixed now with the help of a nut we are going to close it so this is how it looks so as you rotate the handle the wedge rises and allows the flow to go inside Now the wedge is closing the entire flow. I rotate it, the wedge has risen and the entire fluid is going. There is no flow from the top of the wall. Everything is going in the x-axis only. Unidirectional flow is there. And I rotate it, again it comes down, it is closed. Arresting the flow. Thank you. We have another walls which are called as the check walls which we are used only for maintaining unidirectional flow means what for example to take lift this is called a, this is the diagram of a lift wall this is the diagram of a ball wall this is the diagram of a check wall for example when fluid is passing from here to here when you keep a gate wall gate wall can permit the flow from the left hand side it also permit the flow from the right hand side nothing will happen no problem but there are certain types of devices are there, requirements are there where we are supposed to maintain only uniform flow rate means what only one direction only we are supposed to allow the flow of the fluids in that cases we are going to use this kind of walls say once the fluid comes from this place it lifts this object and then it allows them but once it comes from the back then this will be seated and that will arrest the flow of the fluid second one the ball check the fluid will be coming from here and then this will apply the force from here so here you have a see the clearance the ball rises and from here it goes out when the water is coming in the reverse direction the ball will be easily seated and then that will not allow the flow of the water and the most important thing this is all the swing check walls where the fluid is comes from here this object which is swinging rises and then allows the flow of the water but when it is coming in the reverse direction okay as it comes in the reverse direction 
it will be applying force on it and this will be closed this entire object will close it will come from point to fall like this and then the fluid will not be moving from this direction so here in all the three cases the fluid will be moving from left hand side to right hand side left hand side to right hand side left hand side to right hand side so hence they are called as the check valves or non return valves and this is an example of our uh, uh, foot valve which is there in our houses so for example if you have a pump and then piping this in our houses the pipe which is present inside the well will be having a foot wall so this is the example of a foot wall